Hello everybody, my name is Yulai Shamiloglu. I'm director of the PhD in Eurasian Studies program, and I'd like to welcome you to the SSH Virtual Open House. And I'm here to say a few words about the PhD in Eurasian Studies program. And if you're interested, I'm also chair of the Department of Kazakh Language and Turkic Studies. And my own background is as a specialist in uh, Turkic languages and cultures, and also as a PhD uh, in history dealing with uh, the medieval history of Eurasia. So one of the things that I can say as somebody who is in education uh, in the United States at in Columbia College and Columbia University, uh, working with teachers who are great specialists both in philology and uh, also great specialists in let's say, uh, disciplinary fields such as history, is that it's really important to combine the two and when I began a PhD program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison back in the early 1990s, one of the special aspects of that PhD program was the strong emphasis on discipline. So I required, in addition to um, students studying Turkic languages and research languages as appropriate uh, in an English language environment, of course, was that they should study uh, uh, at least as, at the level of a minor, a discipline. So for those interested in Turkic linguistics, it would have been linguistics. For those interested in literature, it would have been comparative literature. I also work with students in the history department, some of whom are uh, prominent scholars uh, in the field today. And what's really exciting about the new PhD in Eurasian Studies program is how we're able to combine an English language education, faculty who are specialists in uh, the disciplines related to Eurasia, many of whom work on Eurasia. We have quite a number of faculty who do that. And in addition to that, we're able to ask students to study not just one, but two disciplines or one discipline and one interdisciplinary field. And what's really important about that is that, yes, you can know the languages. Yes, you can know about that part of the world. But if you don't have a, a discipline, you don't know uh, what constitutes important data. You don't know what kind of questions are important. You don't know what is an important problem. And so uh, the fact that we require students either to deepen a discipline that they've already studied uh, and add a second one, or if they've already taken a lot of courses uh, in their undergraduate and master's programs in one discipline, branch out into one or two other disciplines or another discipline plus an interdisciplinary field. So what's really amazing about that is that we are finally going to be producing international uh, students and local students with an international level education at the highest level, as a matter of fact, who have access to the languages, access to data, uh, know what the life is like here rather than visiting it for a brief time or for a year as something exotic and unusual to do, who will be able to combine their love and passion for the study of this region, uh, the Eurasian region, which is actually a broad region, as you'll see in my, my, my second part, um, combine that with probing uh, research questions with detailed research uh, in, conducted in the region and analyze it in a way that people in North America or Europe or elsewhere might analyze it and produce scholarship in English and other languages, which will be important, original contributions to the field. And I believe that our students are going to become, over the span of 10 to 20 years, prominent scholars who will be contributing to the educational uh, experience of Kazakhstanis in Kazakhstan contributing uh, ability to teach not just in their own local language, but in, uh, in English as well, or if they are uh, have our international students uh, or Kazakhstani students, being able to contribute to knowledge by doing teaching and research and service to the profession, perhaps in the Central Eurasian region, perhaps in Turkey, perhaps in uh, Singapore or Australia or Germany or the Netherlands or the US or Canada. So it's really amazing that after a period of time following World War II, when many scholars moved from uh, this part of the world 
to the United States to set up famous programs of higher education, now the reverse process has begun, where scholars are moving from North America to uh, back to uh, Turkey or now to Kazakhstan to continue this tradition. Now I would like to say a few more words concerning the details of the structure of the PhD in Eurasian Studies program in the School of Sciences and Humanities at Nazarbayev University. This map of Eurasia is great in many ways, but it doesn't do justice to all the regions uh, and countries that we include in the uh, PhD in Eurasian Studies program. I would say that from the perspective of the Master in Eurasian Studies uh, program, for which I don't speak, uh, Eurasia can go from Spain and the UK all the way to Japan. And especially if you're doing something comparative or something more general, uh, that should not be uh, a problem. I think in terms of the PhD program, we're thinking of having the students focus on one or more of countries in the core region. And so, you know, not included on this map, but it really should be, would be places where you have Turkic, Mongolian, Uralic speaking peoples and other indigenous peoples of the region. So Iran and Afghanistan, Northwestern China, Xinjiang, etc., Mongolia, Siberia, uh, the area of interaction between Uralic, Turkic, and Mongolian and other indigenous speakers. So that would, you know, include uh, this area as well. So the way I like to talk about it is if, you know, you wanted to do work on the French Revolution, this is probably not the place for you. We don't have, you know, a, a program in that. But if you're thinking of comparing France and the Ottoman Empire and uh, Meiji Japan, uh, regarding a certain topic, or if you're interested in uh, formerly uh, Turkic and Muslim or uh, Turkic-speaking Jewish minorities in Poland or Lithuania or Ukraine, or if you're interested in the peoples of the Caucasus or the peoples of Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, Turkic minorities in Mongolia or Mongolian uh, speakers and their problems, or indigenous Siberian peoples, uh, you could find a home in this program. I won't go into a detailed overview of the rich faculty in Eurasian studies that Nazarbayev University boasts. We no doubt have the largest faculty in Eurasian studies of any university in the English speaking world, perhaps in the world in general. So uh, we definitely have in the range of 35 to 40 faculty whose work uh, covers uh, parts of Eurasia between Japan and Ireland with many faculty specializing in uh, Central Asia specifically or the Turkic speaking world or the Russian Federation uh, or Turkey. Uh, but we have faculty interested in other uh, parts of Eurasia as well. We have faculty in the Department of History, Philosophy and Religious Studies, faculty in Languages, Linguistics and Literatures, faculty in sociology and anthropology, faculty in Kazakh language and Turkic studies, and faculty in political science and international relations who are participating in the program. We also have faculty in the Department of Economics who are interested in the program, and we also have faculty in the Graduate School of Public Policy who are working with or offering courses that are taken by uh, our students, and we have potentially faculty in other schools as well, and that's because of the interdisciplinary nature of the program. We can say that uh, the Eurasian Studies PhD program is very important because it's the first interdisciplinary doctoral program in the humanities and social sciences in Central Asia. Uh, the program is taught completely or almost completely uh, in English, it is funded by uh, Nazarbayev University, but we also have a grant in collaboration with Humboldt University uh, in which we have received support from the Volkswagen Foundation for the first two cohorts. Uh, all of the accepted students, both Kazakhstani and international students, receive a monthly stipend. 
and we have funds available for academic mobility, so field work, research abroad, library work, and other sites. Of course, during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, currently student mobility is paused. I'm very glad that we have so many uh, faculty interested in Eurasian studies. It gives students a, a broad range of faculty to choose from, and the dissertation research and writing will be co-supervised by both Nazarbayev University and non-Nazarbayev University experts, as is the case with all uh, graduate uh, work. Uh, so in addition to the 35 plus internationally recognized regional specialists from a variety of disciplines in the humanities and social sciences who are based at Nazarbayev University, we do have our partnership with uh, Humboldt University in Germany, which has a, few, a number of specialists on Central Asian studies and Eurasian studies who are already uh, working with uh, some of our students. And there's no obligation that it has to be only uh, international faculty from uh, Humboldt University. Uh, our students have the option of working with faculty from Europe, uh, Australia, the United States, Canada, or elsewhere uh, as well as the external examiner in their uh, committee. So just a few additional words about this program which awards the Doctor of Philosophy in Eurasian Studies. Uh, obviously the first two cohorts are studying right now and so we haven't produced uh, graduates yet. There will be a couple of years before that. But we're confident that this kind of advanced academic training uh, uh, with strong training in theory and a strong training in English, academic writing, and a discipline or two uh, will make our graduates attractive for careers in research, government-related areas, international organizations, academia, and other fields as well. Uh, you students, especially in the post-COVID-19 world, will once again have the opportunity to study in Nur Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan, which is in the heart of Eurasia, and uh, this allows them unparalleled access to archives, fieldwork sites, government agencies, international organizations, uh, foreign diplomats, and even academics at other universities. And it's very attractive, even uh, not just for uh, its location uh, in the heart of Kazakhstan, but we're in close uh, reaching distance to place other neighboring cities, Bishkek, Tashkent, Samarkand, and so on, where students might also be doing work. The campus is very modern. It has modern facilities, including labs, library, sports center, and housing based on need. The PhD program in Eurasian Studies is designed to train versatile and internationally competitive scholars by combining a core curriculum of key concepts in the humanities and social sciences with practical training in necessary writing and research techniques and ethics, as well as rigorous subject-specific training across at least two disciplines plus electives. As somebody who played a major role in designing the program, I want to emphasize how uh, important it is to have a strong disciplinary component in an area studies degree program. What sets this degree program apart is the uh, emphasis on not just one but two uh, disciplines. Uh, so for the first discipline students might choose from a classic discipline such as history or linguistics or literature or sociology or anthropology or political science and then also choose a second field in the American academic system for working towards a PhD, that second field uh, could, could be considered like a minor field, and the first field could be like either deepening what you studied before, if, for example, you studied history as, as an undergraduate and as a master's student and you're deepening your knowledge now, or you could switch to two totally different fields. We've had students who had uh, undergraduate and master's degrees in political science branching out into other areas. Uh, and the other possibility, which I'll discuss soon, is the possibility of having your second discipline be an interdisciplinary field. The program consists of coursework and taking uh, 
a doctoral seminar to prepare a research proposal and then studying for qualifying exams. After the qualifying exam, each student conducts original research to, in order to prepare a doctoral dissertation. This dissertation is expected to make an original contribution to the field and span disciplinary boundaries. Funding opportunities for research abroad and dissertation co-supervision by NU and non-NU experts enable students to develop a truly international profile. I want to emphasize again that in the current uh, COVID-19 uh, environment that uh, I am working closely with the PhD students to uh, design research projects which will not be held hostage to uh, field work which they cannot undertake. So we're trying to have as much as possible uh, uh, change the or recraft the, this, the field of the research to make it uh, more based on uh, online surveys or interviews or library work or having textual based uh, work and other kinds of research which does not require going somewhere where you can't go because of travel restrictions or visa restrictions and you know not having something which would uh, require that you view performances which are no longer live or collaborate closely with people who are no longer able to collaborate closely with others. The final point is that the duration of the program is four years uh, and the structure of the program is eight semesters. This template for the program shows that in the first semester, the fall semester, there are uh, three core courses. One, the introduction to Eurasia, which introduces the student to uh, classic works and ma major theories relevant for the study of Eurasia, plus a, a critical issues course for discussing and, uh, the, these works and guest lectures with uh, the students, and since I'm, I'm teaching that also to make sure that I get to know the students better in their first semester of study. Um, there's also a required writing, academic writing course, which uh, is proving very effective. And in the first semester, you take one uh, elective course in uh, one of your disciplines. In the second semester, you would be taking a, a pro seminar in other universities. It may be called a colloquium, which is a professional introduction to a field. It could be uh, a graduate course in Central Asian history, as I've taught it. It could be uh, an introduction to sociological theory or the history of anthropological theory or uh, a different kinds of kind of qualitative or quantitative methods course. There are also courses which you take in two separate disciplines plus an open elective course. And I think that's very, very important because it highlights the interdisciplinarity and the flexibility of our program. Uh, I could say that I had somebody uh, write me recently who was interested in uh, computational linguistics and uh, cognitive science. And that person said, you know, rather than taking some of the disciplines you offer as a second discipline, what would, how would it be if I took a, a, a course in artificial intelligence or uh, uh, computer science? And I said, you know, that's something that we can certainly consider because of my own interest too. Uh, I know that you know, it could be somebody's uh, project really would benefit from a course in biology or a course in some other field. So that's, we, we're trying to be cutting edge in that regard. This template for year two of the program shows that uh, each semester the students taking a doctoral seminar, the first one in the fall, is dedicated to the preparation of a, the first draft of a research proposal, and they take uh, additional courses in the first discipline or second discipline, uh, and they take another uh, open elective for a total of four courses. In the uh, spring semester, they take the doctoral seminar to finalize their research proposal. Uh, late in the semester, they take uh, the qualifying exam. There's a, a course that they register for that, uh, which gives them uh, the freedom to and time to prepare for their exams. And there's also an open third elective course. And the final uh, third and fourth year of the program is devoted to research, field work, archival work, library work, uh, analysis, writing up a dissertation, and hopefully defending it at the end of the uh, fourth year or eighth semester. 
again, uh, the first graduates of the program have not uh, received their diplomas and gone off to the world. But uh, I and my colleagues believe uh, wholeheartedly that graduates of the PhD in Eurasian Studies program will be attractive to universities, governmental and non-governmental institutions, and employees in Central Asia and around the world. From what I've seen so far, I expect our students to be competitive with graduates of institutions in Europe or the United States uh, or Canada. I do believe that with the rising demand for faculty who can teach in English, uh, just even in Kazakhstan, and uh, that may be coming to other countries as well, that our students, our graduates, will be well qualified to undertake careers in such fields. So I will not be giving individual profiles of our faculty, but the kinds of topics that we have courses on include uh, the medieval and modern political, socio-economic, and intellectual history of Eurasia. Uh, we do have faculty who are interested in religious studies and the study of Islam, Buddhism, and Christianity in Eurasia. Uh, we do have specialists on the archaeology of Eurasia. Uh, we have faculty who are specialists in Kazakh and Turkic languages, literatures, and folklore. Uh, we have faculty who are interested in Russophone literature and culture. And we have faculty in the humanities who are interested in linguistics, language contact, and sociolinguistics of Eurasian languages. In the social sciences, our faculty includes as well specialists on the anthropology of Eurasia, uh, on the politics of Eurasia, on the sociology of Eurasia. There may be uh, selected courses on economics of Eurasia, but we do have faculty who, who in economics who, do, who are from the region and, and work on the region as well. And there are also courses on uh, public policy related to the region. I wanted to make sure that uh, our visitors to this virtual open house understood that uh, in terms of discipline one, we mean a traditional classic uh, discipline, academic discipline, such as anthropology, comparative literature, history, linguistics, political science, or sociology. Uh, uh, it's common at uh, American doctoral programs that the second field or minor uh, may be an interdisciplinary or independently constructed uh, field. And so uh, we have introduced uh, this possibility for students to increase the flexibility and to uh, make it possible to do exciting new things. And we have a uh, new proposal that the uh, Eurasian Studies Curriculum Committee approve all such uh, independently constructed or interdisciplinary minors. I'd like to say a few more words on what the interdisciplinary field might look like. Uh, it may consist of two or more courses in one or more departments. It can be an interdisciplinary field with its own established body of theory. For example, religious studies, women's studies, environmental studies, folklore, uh, performance studies, etc. We're also open to the possibility that it may be somehow connected to uh, language, family, and culture, or regional studies of a sort. Uh, and so I'm hoping that uh, we will have uh, students who may choose Turkic studies or Slavic studies. Uh, we actually have enough courses that it's potentially possible to even do Korean studies uh, uh, or you know some other some other kind of, uh, of field. And so this is uh, you know really important because we're not trying to reproduce programs of the 19th century or the early 20th century. We are trying to create an interdisciplinary Eurasian studies program that will be appropriate for the 21st century. And I, should, I can just say that as chair of the Department of Kazakh Language and Turkic Studies, uh, in addition to being director of the Eurasian Studies PhD program, that we've had discussions about the importance of digital studies and coding and computer science for uh, digital humanities, for uh, research in digital uh, Turkic studies uh, in the future. There are people who work on uh, machine translation, uh, other kinds of topics related to artificial intelligence. Uh, I can say that uh, one of my many research interests is the history of disease in this part of the world. 
And so uh, I even have to draw upon uh, scholarly work in the history of medicine and even genetics. And so it may be that we can train better students in the future by allowing them the possibility to have like history of medicine as a field or population genetics as a field or artificial intelligence or uh, computer science. Uh, you, the, the possibilities are endless. I just wanted to uh, make a quick statement that if somehow you were to see a list of the courses we are offering this semester at the PhD level, uh, we don't have an extensive list of courses by topic. Uh, what we do do is we share courses with the master's program and upper level undergraduate uh, programs and in order to have a richer set of offerings, which is why uh, some of the uh, PhD level courses will meet with uh, some of these other courses using the numbers listed here. But I'd like to assure you that uh, the assessments, the, the work that you do, the readings that you do are uh, appropriate for a PhD level course. And I'm responsible for ensuring that. And this additional note, just, just to explain some of the uh, restrictions on that, it's not really important for trying to understand the basics of the program. Thank you very much for your attention. Спасибо за ваше внимание. Назар Отаран, музыкальный наставник. Слава Thank you for joining the PhD in Eurasian Studies program during the SSH Virtual Open House. Слава